Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to talk about a security vulnerability that was posted recently in regards to Cisco video endpoints. This uh, security vulnerability is related to the wireless sharing of intelligent proximity. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Consider giving me a thumbs up if you find this helpful. Pass it along to others. Uh, with that being said though, let's dive in and check it out firsthand. First of all, let's dive into Cisco's website where the security vulnerabilities are posted. I actually have a link in the comments section below if you want to check out this post firsthand. Uh, and here it is. It is Cisco Intelligent Proximity SSL Certificate Validation Vulnerability. Essentially, the attacker can forge an SSL certificate and the client-server relationship is not validating that. And in essence, you can snoop on the uh, session and uh, possibly inject your own commands or content into the session as well. So let's take a look at what is affected specifically, because that sounds pretty bad, but I'm going to boil it down. And actually, this is pretty manageable, uh, in my opinion, as long as you um, know what you're getting into. So first of all, the lack of uh, certificate validation is really the root cause here. Uh, and it has to be a man-in-the-middle attack to be able to actually see this. Uh, so that is what the first section is here. I will let you uh, read that. It's very important to know that this vulnerability does not affect cloud-registered video endpoints. Cisco's big push is to get to the cloud, and when you're registered to the cloud, the security certificates are uh, you know, validated. There, there's a lot more security wrapped around this. The big issue comes in with prem registered devices, though, because the certificates are self-signed. Essentially, the trust relationship is not there, right? The certificate is not signed, and the client is just, the proximity client is just saying, cool, I'll take whatever you give me, is essentially what's going on here. So with that being said, let's, uh, let's scoot down through here. Um, pretty much anything that talks proximity is impacted if it's registered on-prem. So that means your video endpoints are prem registered. Uh, or not registered at all, they're just in some type of standalone mode. And the clients, whatever clients they may be, make that pairing connection from a, a proximity perspective, that content stream could be impacted. Now that content stream does not go to the cloud, it's on-prem, so your on-prem network security comes into factor here. If your network is built in such a way that it's impossible or nearly impossible to perform a man-in-the-middle attack, i.e i.e. ARP poisoning or some type of DHCP rogue router setup, something like that, you could really, I mean, you, you probably don't have to change anything if you're confident in that configuration, right? DHCP snooping, ARP inspection, um, switch port security, that type of thing, if that's in place from a wired side, as well as client security from a wireless perspective, you know, you might be, you might be in good shape uh, already, but... Uh, if you want to go a step further, uh, there's likely going to be a software patch coming. However, in the meantime, this, the best steps are to shut proximity off. So you can do this a couple different ways. In my opinion, the easiest is to actually disable proximity on the video endpoint itself, uh, because that is the server component of this relationship. You can disable it on clients as well. Uh, however, because you may have different proximity clients in your environment, it's probably easiest to disable on video endpoints. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. To actually disable this on a video endpoint, you want to come into the administrative uh, admin page of the endpoint. Uh, you can probably do some of this through the X API as well. If I come up with those commands, I'll drop them in the comments section. But uh, come to configuration, I just search for proximity. And here are all the proximity settings. So if you want to disable it outright uh, totally, you can just change the mode to off under the, uh, the mode setting. From a services perspective, you know, the services offered through proximity, you can actually disable them individually as well. So if you're, you know, not comfortable with content being shared over proximity, that might be one thing. You can disable that. But if you don't mind call control being shared over proximity, maybe you still allow that to be configured. Um, so in this case, I have them all disabled. And just for the user's uh, you know, benefit under the user interface setting and custom message, I actually put a note here that says, please, please note proximity is disabled on this system. And you can see on the screen there what that looks like on the UI of the endpoint, right? actually on the screen. 
As we scroll down through this security vulnerability in more depth, you can see the client applications again. My preference would be to disable on the video endpoints, but uh, the client applications allow you to disable this as well. Uh, Jabber config for Jabber. There's WebEx meetings. You can actually disable it there. WebEx teams and the Cisco meeting app for the Cisco meeting server all have ways to disable this. Uh, there's a couple other details in here. I will let you read that, but uh, that is the security vulnerability. Now you might be saying, wow, this is a huge pain in the neck. How do I share content wirelessly now in a meeting when I'm in front of a prem registered video endpoint? Well, it, I guess there's a couple options. If you're in a WebEx meeting, you could actually join that meeting and share content through the WebEx meetings app. So it's actually going to the meeting, sharing into the meeting, and then that content stream is being delivered back to your video endpoint. Uh, in that scenario, that'd be one way to do it. In a scenario where you might be using a Cisco meeting server, you could do something similar there, open the client, share content into the call that way, and then it's going to show up on your video endpoint. Not ideal, um, but both are workable. Now, of course, this does not impact the ability to plug in the HDMI or VGA cable uh, and share, you know, old school uh, if you would like. So anyway, that is the security vulnerability. Hopefully this has been helpful to give you some ideas of how to work around it and how to deal with it. Uh, definitely know your environment well. Uh, work with your network team if you're, you know, exclusively collaboration. Understand the networking impacts. Maybe your network is more susceptible to this than, than not. Uh, or maybe it's locked down pretty well and this isn't really even a concern. So uh, anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. If you have questions, comments, tips, or tricks, leave them in the video comment section below. And I want to thank you for watching. I hope to see you again sometime soon.